React Native developers. <laughs> William here, presenting from beautiful Krakow, Software Mansion, Expo, thank you so much for having me today. With Christian Folk and Shopify, we've created React Native Skia, an effort to bring rich 2D primitives to React Native. We got started by finding the shortest integration path between these two technologies, and we exposed the Ski API to JavaScript using GSI, and we built our own React renderer to draw the Ski drawings. This brings us a couple of thing, things. So first, we can use it on iOS and Android, but of course, on the web, we use it a lot with Remotion. So what you're seeing here is a Skia Canva in React Native. And so we render the React Native tutorials using React Native Skia. And that includes also the React Native Skia source code, which is also rendered using React Native Skia, so it has been a lot of fun. You can also use the renderer on Node if you want to generate images or videos. We use it to run end-to-end -end testing. So here, we use a Skia renderer with Jest. We ask it to generate a documentation image, and we check it for correctness. And you can also serialize the tree, send it to an iOS and Android device to do end-to-end -end te testing. You get the image as a result, and we can check for correctness. Lately, we've, we've migrated our JavaScript renderer to a C++ renderer. We call it Skia DOM. This new renderer brings us two things. First, because it's in C++, we don't need the JavaScript thread to be available to render a frame. So it gives us a very fast first time to frame. And the second thing is that it brings us 10 to 100 times performance improvements, depending on the drawing. So this is an example. On the left is the old Skia renderer. And on the left side, every second, we were all, uh, allocating around 3,000 GSI objects. So these are ski objects that need to be memory managed by JavaScript. And at these scales, uh, things start to be a, a bit slow. But now in the new renderer, things are much, much faster. And it's all rendered on the UI thread. There is a really fun package that takes, takes advantage of uh, uh, this new renderer. And it's, it's, it's React Native Ski, uh, Fiesta from um, Matteo Guzman. And he needs to display a lot of uh, uh, drawing commands and elements, and animate them. So a really, really fun uh, package. We got started by finding the shortest integration path between React Native and Skia to a fully tailored declarative solution. Over time, our understanding of how these two technologies, React Native and Skia, should integrate together is getting increasingly sophisticated, which brings us to today's presentation. I'd like to show you three things. Things which are near and dear to our hearts. And before we have a look at what Christian and I have been working on, let's have a look at what you guys have been working on. Hey everyone. Hello everyone. I'm Adria and I lead the app development at Orca. So hi everyone. I'm Enzo. About a year ago, I co-founded together with other two amazing software developers a React Native consulting company called Worker. My name is Dan. By day, I am a React Native developer. And by night, I am a YouTuber that runs a channel called Dan's React Native Lab. I'm Mark, CEO of Margelo. At Margelo, we built some pretty cool apps for our clients and maintain some of the most popular open source libraries. React Native Skia is an important piece of the puzzle. React Native Graph is a library to render 2D line graphs and is used by quite a few crypto and fitness apps out there. We built the library using Skia to make use of the blazingly fast rendering engine and provide a smooth user experience even at highly complex graphs. Orca is a modern navigation system for boats that runs on iOS, Android, and our custom-made hardware. In Orca, we make a Tesla-like screen that includes maps, instruments, autopilot controls, weather forecast, etc. 
The main difference, though, is that forecasts for boats instead of forecasts. And compared to cars drivers, boaters care much more about instruments. Therefore, we face the challenge of displaying all this information in real time on a fully customizable and easy-to-use dashboard. We designed a minimalistic UI that needed to be animated and adaptable to any screen size. And that's when we came across React Native Skia. We found that this library was the perfect match for our needs. The developer experience was great, and the implementation was incredibly smooth. On my channel, I like to create um, sort of intermediate level videos on a lot of different topics. And one of those funnest topics is actually React Native Skia. When React Native Skia came out, I sort of latched onto it and got really excited. I started by doing simple things like just moving simple shapes around the screen. Over time, I graduated to more complex things like charts and graphs. Um, I started having fun with it by making circles and stuff that would morph. By the time about a year went by, I was just having fun and doing confetti and adding fun heartbeat animations to um, a heartbeat app that I made. As a company, we know that the secret behind a perfect app lies in the details, namely the animations. Being Italian, there is just one thing that I know perfectly well. There are some ingredients that absolutely shouldn't be used together, like pineapple and pizza, and the others that when used together work perfectly. Skia and React definitely fall in the second category, allowing React Native development to meet creativity and madness. And that's basically what has led me to create my Patreon account, where I try to share the most interesting use cases in which to apply these two amazing packages. Glass morphism, team switching, creating custom tabs are just a few of the thousands of use cases where Skia gives you the ability to reach a design set that uh, was impossible to reach before in React Native. Tom and I are working on a new rendering layer for Vision Camera. This allows you to render shaders, draw boxes, blur stuff, and even more using Skia's easy to use JavaScript API. Thanks to Skia, we can bring even the craziest designs to life. Back to you, William. Thank you, Margello, Orca, Shopify, and Worklet, and you, the community, for trusting this project. Speaking of working together, let's talk about animations. And the gold standard for animations is, of course, reanimated. Some of you have seen this story countless times when animating in React Native, the, le nerf de la guerre, the heart of the matter, is to keep the JavaScript thread free. So here we block the JavaScript thread, and of course, the animation is blocked because we need it to be available to animate. Christophe Maguire has single-handedly built a new integration between reanimated free and Skia, and this is how it looks like. So there are, it's, a, it's done on the UI thread. So there are two things to notice here, is that now if we block the JavaScript thread, the animation still runs, because we don't need the JavaScript thread anymore to run the animation. And the second thing to notice here on the, on the source code is that, so this is the reanimated code that you know and love, and if you are a pro at reanimated, you're gonna be a pro at animating skier. And also you can see that we can pass reanimated values directly as properties. There is no use animated style nor uh, use animated props. The Skia renderer understands how to, to deal with these values. And we think that you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. But this is about more than performance. We think that this new integration is enabling use cases that were not possible before, and I'd like to show you one. This is a Skia Canva that animates rotates, scales, pinch different uh, vectors and pictures on, onto the Canva. And this is done using Gesture Handler and the new reanimated integration. There are maybe two things interesting about this is that, so first, building such an example is now extremely simple to do, thanks to Gesture Handler version 2.0. Some of you might remember that these things used to be really complex to do and almost impossible and now it's actually only a few lines of code. When you're gonna see the demo, I think you're gonna be really surprised by only 
it's only a few lines of code to, to build the whole demo. And the second thing to notice is that, and this has been a really um, a common feature request, is that even though this is a single Skia Canva, we can track and apply gestures on separate elements to the Canva. And the way we do it is by overlaying native views on top of elements in the Skia Canva, and we can track the same transformation matrix to display the vector graphics and the view. And Gesture Handler keeps nicely track of the transformation when you pinch, zoom, do the pivot points, and it's all perfectly in sync. Another compelling example of the Gesture Handler integration is this okay. um, graph. So here the whole graph is a um, Skia Canva, and we want to be able to scroll. So if we touch the Skia Canva, we still we don't want the gesture to, to be active. We only want the gesture to be active with, if we touch the little cursor uh, in the middle. And so this is what the new reanimated integration is enabling us to, to do. So thank you, Christoph. And thank you, Software Mansion, for building these incredible modules with reanimated and gesture handler. Now, I would like to talk about the elephant in the room. When we introduced React Native Skia, we got really excited, to say the least, and we showed these little demos of, so these are, we call it backdrop filters, so we're not blurring the shape, but we're blurring what's behind the shape. And we were really happy to, to learn how these things are done in Skia and then to offer a declarative API on how to do it in React Native. We were really excited and proud. The elephant in the room is that, of course, this only works because the pixels behind the shapes are done in Skia. If you have a native view, the Skia view has no idea to know what it needs to blur. I'd like to show you an example. This is an example from um, Enzo's Patreon. And here we have clearly a native view. This is Google Maps, and we play around with it a little bit. And when we open the model, so the semi-transparent view that you're seeing here is a Skia view. And we ask it to blur, but of course the Skia view has no idea to, doesn't know about the Google map view behind. And sometimes when I see this example, I feel bad about the Skia view because we ask it to blur some pixel, but it's like, no, what do you want me to blur? I, just, I don't see any pixels. So what are we going to do? There is a little non-secret in the React Native community is that the native part of the name stands for native. So surely, if we can do it in native, we can do it in React Native. So let's have a look at the same demo, but running the latest version of Skia. So we play around with the native view a little bit, and then we're going to, maybe I'm playing around a little, a little bit too long here. But at some point, we're going to tap on the modal, and now this is a ski of you blurring the Google Map view. <laughs> and this is hard to see here, but also the blur view is slightly animated with the scale value, so thanks to the new reanimated integration, you can animate using the same code your native views and the ski of views. So how does it work? We provide a new API for snapshot views. It's based on a similar technique used by React Native uh, view snapshot, but it's a bit faster because we don't do the image encoding and so on. We just take the bitmap and upload it to the GPU. And so this is a low-level API. To build this demo, I actually wrote a component called Skia Filter, where you can pass a native view as a children, pass the Skia Filter as a property, and we try to identify the different patterns in which people will use this feature, and we will hopefully offer some higher level construct to use it. But this is about more than just doing backdrop blurs. So I'd like to show you another example. This is a completely native app. The text is rendered using React Native text. We have a scroll view, everything. And now I would like to turn the page. So how are we going to turn the page? Maybe we can use a shader, and maybe it can, use, it can look like this. Let's have a look. So 
Here we took the snapshot of the foreground view, the background view, and we applied the skier shader to it. We use GL transitions. There are, I think, thousands and thousands of GL transitions available. You can choose uh, anyone you like. If, if you think this is corny, there's plenty that I'm sure you will like. I would like to show you one last example, which is a bit more involved. So this is, a, again, a native app, fully native view, and we switch from light mode to dark mode. So is there a way maybe we could make it a bit more um, exciting? So one way we thought maybe this could look like is this one. So this is a bit more involved because we, when we press the dark mode, we don't know yet how the dark mode view is going to look like. So we wait one frame, two frames, to see if the dark mode has been re-rendered, and then we just apply a clip path to the, to the animation. And once you, the transition is over, you're, you're back to the native view. So that's native view snapshots, finally giving access to skia views to the native view pixels. These are some of the use cases we had in mind when designing the feature, but we think that you guys will come up with even more creative ways to use it, and we cannot wait to see them. So now I would like to show you one last thing. The text that you are seeing on screen here is rendered using React Native Skia. That's a new rich text API we are working on. You can use it to do text layouts. It supports full internationalization and also fonts from the system. So this is a, another example. You can now the Skia renderer supports text nodes. They can be deeply nested with one another. You can apply different styles to your uh, text. This is very much uh, a work in progress. The API is really, really big, and we want to, to make sure we're careful with it. And we've been struggling with shipping interna full internationalization support on, on iOS, but um, we've received great support from the Skia team at Google, and we think we're onto a really good solution now, so that's something that should come later this year. And so these were the three things I wanted to show you today. Reanimated free integration with Skia, allowing you new fun use cases mainly with gesture handler and allowing you to reuse existing animation code and knowledge to your ski animations. Image snapshots finally giving access to the native views to the ski view and a sneak peek of our upcoming rich text API. All of these things are the fruits of the hard work of Christian Falk, Shopify, and Software Mansion. Thank you to our amazing industry partners for trusting this project. If you are interested in using Skia or are using Skia, come to GitHub, say hello, let us know what you are up to. And so indeed, I am looking forward to talk to you soon, and until next time, happy hacking. Thank you.